Hello, I'm Deirdre McGettrick, co-founder and CEO of Kuldea, and together with... I'm Audrey Whelan, a founder of Audrey Whelan Interior Design. We have come together to bring you our podcast series, which is called The DNA of Home Interiors. Audrey and I have found each other on Instagram, and through our shared experiences, we would love to share with you everything about home design and home furnishing to empower you to make the best decisions possible. Audrey, do you want to tell us a little bit more about you and your business and your background? Yeah, yeah. So um, I've been running my own interior design business for 10 years. Uh, prior to that, I worked for other people for 10 years. Um, and over the past 10 years of running my own business, I've focused mainly on residential interior design and um, doing a lot of interior design, but also project management. And um, what I found as time went on was that I was getting more and more inquiries from people who were running their own projects, but really struggling with the amount of decisions they needed to make and how overwhelmed they felt during the process. It wasn't always possible for me to jump in and help them because I'd be running bigger jobs. And um, so I just didn't have the time available sort of at short notice. But what this did do was that over time, it really inspired me um, to refocus my business to be able to help people in this situation. And um, so more recently, um, I've been doing individual consultations with people to help them at various stages of the projects. And I've also set up um, interior design workshops. So covering different topics of home interiors um, and I'm running these in various uh, locations around London. So that offers people a chance to come along whether it's at the very beginning and they need inspiration and ideas to get their project off the ground or perhaps later when they've got builders on site and they've got some crucial decisions to make um, at short notice. And it's funny that you mentioned that frustration because I suppose I bought an apartment two and a half years ago and as part of that that was very much the journey that I went on all of that frustration it's the first time that you're furnishing a home and creating that design which you want to reflect your personality but also you've got all the social pressures of it looking like it's designed and it will be Instagram worthy so I suppose a lot of what you do when we actually talked about it was sort of giving people the confidence to to follow your own sort of style and not be completely led and I did have the opportunity to go to uh, one of your workshops which are amazing and obviously I'd highly recommend and they're available on, on your website all the details about those and how you can join them but I suppose I jumped into the project like a lot of people do and what you sort of begin to find is that having been on your, your workshop all of those design decisions going back to the basics I skipped through those and then I fell through every single possible um, you know, a loophole that I could and every mistake that was possible to make, I felt like I ended up making them because you're so determined to push ahead and then you sort of bring it back mm -hmm. and realize that they're the wrong decisions, but you've got to yeah. learn the lessons the hard yes. way. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is what I find so many times with people that they'll say, oh, you know, I just want to make the first decision and then everything else should hopefully fall into place. But then what actually happens is when they start looking at, say, sofas, they get so confused by the amount of sofas out there and all the various decisions about size, fabrics, whether it's L-shape or two single sofas and so on. Um, but they're not looking at the room as a whole necessarily. So they're trying to make one decision on its own, but actually every other decision in that room is going to be impacted by that sofa decision. So what I like to do is actually say to people, you know, look at the whole room in one go. So let's actually write down even all the decisions that need to be made in that room and pull together ideas for every single thing. So that's, you know, um, obviously it's a sofa. It's, are you going to have some storage in the room? Maybe bookcases. Are you going to have an armchair, what about lighting, um, wall colours, flooring and so on. And so pulling together, you can do it with the images of specific products, but then also I'm a real believer in looking at different samples and materials as well to really give you that appreciation for the, the feel of things, the texture and how those different surfaces can work together in a room. So that's, yeah, I've, I think that's probably what you quite enjoyed then out of that process to exactly. go right back to basics. And, exactly. Yeah. It's, and I think that's the step before most people maybe miss out on and yet it's crucial because yes. you don't sort of yeah. just jump in and start baking yeah. your cake. You do look at the recipe yeah. and yes. you need to know where yeah. you're going before just yeah. going out yeah. and doing it. That's it, yeah. And I suppose you talked there about 
you know, the sofa and you get a tooth seater or a three seater or is it L shaped and all the options that are out there. And that was really the inspiration behind the Cool Dia business. You were looking at all of these products and you first jump in and you don't know what a divan is. I didn't know what an ottoman was. So yeah, it's trying to get yeah. that education yes. and process. So what I envisage was actually a one website where consumers can shop across all retailers in the market, shop, discover, compare and find because there's so many retailers out there and so many options that people yeah, don't yeah, even yeah, realize. Yeah. So it's all about showing the full option once you've done that design stage and you're going to your search process, you can jump on Kuldia, you can search across the entire market, favorite your products, create your collection, see how they go together, yes. see what yeah. the budget adds up to, and then feel that you're empowered because you've done the design and you've done the proper research to actually go through and complete the purchase and yeah. finish your room off. Yes. Yeah, yeah, because it's really, I mean, in the industry, like how I've always worked is dividing up kind of the, those two processes really that you're talking about into stages so you've got that initial kind of concept stage which is what we do in the workshops with the mood board and then the sourcing stage is the next stage so you, it's not really possible to efficiently source on a project sort of certainly when it's a project you're doing kind of commercially and you need to do it in a set amount of time and um, it's not possible to achieve that unless you know sort of what your guidelines are of what you're looking for so if you know that you're looking for you know in a dining room perhaps you've identified at the mood board stage that your table is going to be perhaps marble or white because you've got a wood floor you definitely don't want a wood table but then your next stage then is to actually look for right well what kind of marble tables or white tables are out there and um, so i guess on Kildia then you can sort of start to see well actually marble is going to cost me maybe five times the price of white and um, you know and then you can go through all the other items in your room in a similar way and then budget and look at what can I sort of spend the extra on the marble table and then cut back a bit on um, other items maybe dining chairs or lighting in the room and it's amazing because during the the mood board workshop I and I think a lot of people because what we speak to at Cool Dia is a lot of people that are going through the home furnishing process and that's first time buyers right through to people that are buying a replacement sofa or moving into a bigger house and upsizing around having families and everybody has this idea in their, ha in their head and it's things you get influenced from you know being out in restaurants and bars and hotels but one thing that really shocked me was when I had these ideas in my head when I actually went to the workshop and put them on the paper and looked at them together I could immediately see the clashes mm, but most people yeah, don't yeah. give themselves yes. that opportunity no. instead you rush out you buy them yeah you put them together in your yeah. room and only then do you realize yes. that yeah. oh my god yeah. that's a clash how could yeah. I have ever thought they yeah. would go together yeah. and the yeah. importance of that stage which I would recommend everybody to do because I completely made it is to actually plan from the get-go and actually do as much research and you said you can do it all in your head right now because you're so used to it but really putting it down on paper it must be key for everybody yeah, that's starting I off. I think so I mean I, I may have said I can do it in my head but <laughs> what I definitely Are you lying? Still, yeah no what I definitely still do is is put things together and um, even if it's digitally and I will look at uh, items on a just uh, you know uh, on a document on the computer just pull images together and look at how they are and sometimes I'll think no you know that armchair just isn't right it's too bright so I'll swap it over for something else and I find that's a really good kind of visual aid um, before doing any purchasing on a project and um, so I do think that's key so yeah there's a certain amount I can do in my head but you know certainly if it's for somebody else and not me and I can't afford to take those risks then I do find you know it, it is good to look at it all in one go and um, it's also then an easy way to have a conversation with somebody else and say you know this is what the room would look like these are the key things and then to kind of swap in and out a few items if you want kind of more contrast in the room or more patterns yeah. or less and you really get the kind of mood and the atmosphere from it then by doing that so i'm intrigued you obviously do this for a lot of your projects did you actually create a mood board when it was your own home for your house uh, when yes. you designed it oh yeah yeah you absolutely did. yeah okay. yeah yeah i've got pretty much my whole house done up on sketchup in 3d so i can <laughs> test out so you, you do know, practice any, what you, you know, preach yeah yeah 
Yeah. Good. <laughs> and yeah, mood boards as well. Yeah, so just really simple. I mean, you can even just use like PowerPoint. It doesn't have to be any fancy design program and just, you know, um, sort of screenshot images and drop them in. And I would do that. And then the beauty of it is that um, over time, you know, say with this living room, um, you know, I can just go back and think, oh yeah, I want to replace something or add something. And I'll just go back to that mood board and I'll pop the item in there and, you know, see what it looks like. Um, so yeah, it's a good way to just- That's a really good point out. because you, you don't think about that. You think about creating your look, but you don't think about the replacement of items actually yeah, having that there that you yes. can go back to. Yeah, yeah. Again, you're Absolutely. full of good tips. Yeah, and also, I mean, on the, on, you know, the, I mean, 3D modeling obviously is, you know, is a skill that you need to learn, but I kind of feel, you know, uh, hopefully maybe in the future it'll be a thing you buy property and there's a 3D model with it and you can automatically just start to kind of work out, you know, what, what goes in or you can see an ideal layout. You know. So I think that's really helpful as well. Because at the end of the day, I suppose there's two real sides to the furnishing um, dilemma that people tend to have. You know, one is like the mood board aspect of kind of the look and feel and what comes together. But yeah. then the other side, obviously, you know, which is equally and almost more important is, you know, what will fit in because there's no point in, you know, having the big L shaped sofa and okay, maybe it'll technically fit in the room, but it just won't look right because you don't have enough room to circulate around it. So having a method to be able to test out this. So, I mean, in the workshops, we do very basic scale drawing by hand on some of the, like the kitchen and bathroom design workshops in particular. And um, so that gives people sort of an insight into just how to do that very simply. Obviously, there's a lot of apps and things out there as well that you can do it with and again then once you do it it's almost like a good investment of time to draw up your room because then over time if you want to make changes you've got the basics there and you just yeah. need to kind of swap things around and i suppose as you as you move from the inspiration side of things into the sourcing it's a constant frustration that we constantly see across everyone that we speak to and across the market that people get really frustrated from the fact that you know exactly what you want and you've seen it on Instagram mm -hmm. or you've seen it yeah. in a hotel. So you know it exists mm -hmm. out there, mm -hmm. but how do you find yes, it? Yes, and that's what you so said, isn't it? So that's exactly said. then about how Kuldia can come in and help you because you can search across all of the furniture retailers in the market. And that's not just the names that you would typically search on, but it's all smaller ones as well. So the range of products really should give you that ideal fit for what you want. And then of course, applying your parameters like you discuss, if you've got a certain dimensions or that material or that color and apply mm -hmm. that to really narrow down and find yeah. the item that's perfect yes. for you in your home. Yeah, yeah. Because the other thing that can happen is like you can see something you love, like you said, in a hotel or somewhere, but then when you kind of test out using that item in your home, as in you measure up maybe, and you just think, well, that is not going to fit. It's going to be too big. But then it's great to still be able to take inspiration from something you find that you really yeah. like and then think, okay, well, maybe I can search for something that is similar. So it might be that, you know, it was in particular, it was a combination of say, it might've been a green sofa with brass legs. So you think, well, instead let's have a green armchair with brass legs, but then yeah. you've got the challenge of finding something that kind of has a similar look but in a different type of, um, a, you know, different piece of furniture. So, yeah, it's, yeah. it's good to, be able to see that. And that's, uh, that, uh, that sofa that potentially is too big for the room, I'm, I'm thinking back because my parents bought a three-seater black leather sofa and two big reclining armchairs, and they are huge. And they didn't look that big in the big warehouse, but of course, when we took them home and put them in our living room, all of a sudden it was like this was the worst buy yes, ever yeah. and you've bought them so yeah. you're stuck with them yeah. and it's it's those sort of mistakes that we really want to take you through the journey through the podcast and I suppose is it worth maybe chatting about some of the other themes and what we'll sort of discuss yeah. to help people along the way yeah so um obviously we've covered yeah quite a few aspects of uh, furnishing there and um, but also we will take specific areas of house and um, we look at um rooms like such as kitchens 
bathroom specific dilemmas that crop up quite a bit um, I mean at this stage I've worked with over 250 people around London and um, it's amazing over time just seeing that you know what people struggle with is often what you know somebody else will struggle with and the next I was going to say it must be quite yeah, repetitive see quite a repeat yeah. so obviously and not that everybody has the same solution then because they'll have a different property but it will be the concept of something that they're trying to figure out which I will see you know repeated again and again in different scenarios so I think you know quite good to focus on particular rooms like that and maybe kids bedrooms as well and um, then um, also it would be great looking into uh, sort of the relationship with tradespeople more so you know furnishing is one thing uh, but then obviously a lot of times that's going in tandem with um, bigger projects where there's a refurbishment or decoration um, so I think areas such as obtaining quotes and how to effectively manage those tradespeople um, would be great to discuss as well. I think everybody would be, would be very keen to, to see on that regard but we also want to do a little bit of a behind the scenes mm -hmm. and that's with our home buyers and home furnishers who have gone through the journey already, people that are renovating so we're going to meet a lot of people to find out from their mistakes and also their, their wins because it's not all mistakes, people do get a lot of things right yeah. as well but unfortunately yeah. I think the mistakes tend to always stand out a little bit more because they're the thing you see in the home that you sort of regret as were the things that you love you yeah. sort of begin to take those for granted so we'll be doing lots of that and doing also behind the scenes with some of the furniture retailers and um, that we have on the Kuldia website really figuring out what goes into furniture design and the furniture making process and how that's linking into sustainability, which is a big trend today. Mm -hmm. And we're also really keen to share with you the trends that we see. So we have got many, many, many thousands of users on Kuldia, so we can really see what's happening in the market. And we're also gonna talk about trends in the market. We have great insight into what people are buying and what are the key trends for the different seasons from all of our insights at Kuldia. I think one other point, Audrey, that we, we touched upon as well is that we wanted to chat about the individual items and top tips for buying individual specifics of furniture. Um, and one thing that we uh, should hopefully talk about as well is coffee tables. I don't know if any of you out there have had the dilemma as to whether to buy one or not, which leads in nicely to furnishing decisions with your other half. Yes, that's right. Yeah, so this is something I've encountered a lot um, over time. So um, how do people actually agree on uh, what they're going to put in their homes and uh, what they're going to purchase? So um, yeah, we, we'll delve into that subject and hopefully help anybody who's you know feeling the pressure in that situation. Because of course the other half does have an opinion and you, you could take it into consideration and yeah, we'll, we'll delve into that one a little bit more. And I suppose lastly, we're just really excited about all things design and home interiors and home furnishings. So we're super excited to be able to share all of our, our insights and your years of experiences and really link in with other people who are experiencing furnishing their homes to learn their lessons. And it all ultimately is back to giving people the confidence and empowering them to find the perfect furniture design and sourcing of products for their home. Uh, Audrey, I think one thing we haven't probably explained is actually the name of yeah, the podcast, yeah, the DNA right, yeah. of Home Interiors. Yeah, uh, yeah. Do you want to yeah, go through with yeah. how we so, came up with it? So the DNA is Deirdre and Audrey. D and A. Okay. We were very creative. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but we wanted it really to represent at the same time in the same way that DNA is integral to everything that goes on. It's sort yeah. of the A to Z that we're going to be talking about uh, for the furnishing. So yeah, we're, we're pretty excited to be on the journey. So be sure to follow us across our social media channels. The DNA of Home Interiors is on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram and Twitter. So thank you for joining us and stay tuned for the next one.